Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use the simple search gadget in custom charts for Jura. Jura. This is a sponsored video, and so I am going to be essentially walking you through a tutorial on how to configure, set it up, and use it in your custom charts for Jura dashboard. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Drop a like if you find any value in this video. And if you have any questions about anything in this video, let me know in the comment section below. Especially, are you using custom charts for Jira? I'd like to know. Let me know down below. All right, let's jump into Jira and let's take a look. Actually, before we jump into Jira, I actually want to take you to custom charts actual documentation so that if you're more of a visual learner with respect to text, I'm going to show you where the guide is at so that you can actually read through some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today. So you're going to want to go Google custom chart for Jira. You're going to find their OSS apps at Alaskan.net. This is their Confluence page. This is their public facing Confluence page that basically will teach you everything you need to know. I'm going to be highlighting in, in these series of sponsored videos. I'm going to be highlighting key things that I use every day in, in my reports and in the metrics that I build. And so we're going to navigate ourselves over here on the left to user guide. And then from user guide, I'm going to come down to simple search. Now you may be asking yourself like, why simple search? Well, if you remember from my video from last week, I recommend you go check out that overview of executive dashboards using custom charts, putting the charts in Jira, just like the gadgets themselves. That's great. They're very static, uh, traditional gadgets. What I'm going to do today is I'm hoping to blow your mind away because I absolutely love the simple search gadget because it just completely overpowers your your gadgets, your your regular metrics. And the simple search is going to enable all kinds of opportunities that when I did, when I first discovered it, I just like literally was just amazed with the power that you get out of the simple search. So because of that, I want to start there. And then over the next few weeks, I'm going to be adding additional uh, gadgets to kind of show you how they all interact with each other and how they integrate with each other. We'll, we'll basically be covering these four little parts here. We'll teach you how to add it, how to configure it, how to connect it, and then how to actually use it. So we'll, we'll leave this to the side. I'm going to jump back into Jira now for real this time. And then I'm going to basically start with step one. So step one is going to be adding the simple search gadget. This is what it looks like based on their website. And so we're going to go into our dashboard. We're going to add the gadget. We're going to search for the simple search gadget. And then we're going to just bring it in into our project. Once it's there, we'll, we'll do the second part, which is configuring it. So first thing we're going to do, go to dashboards. I'm already in my dashboards, pick whatever dashboard you want. Make sure you have custom charts plugin already enabled. I have a video on that as well. So go back and look, look for that. And so you don't really need to have anything right now. I have these charts, so don't let them distract you, but these are not a requirement for right now. What we are going to do is we're going to go to edit here on the right. There, since I do have quite a bit, I'm going to look up for simple search like they recommended. It's down here. And so I'm just going to click on add. Jira is automatically going to put it on the top left corner. And so all I'm going to do is for simplicity sake right now is I'm going to maximize it so you can see the whole thing. A little bit easier to see. And then we're going to move on over to the next step. So step two here is to configure it. And so there's a couple of different things that you can do here. You can select like based off the projects, based off of safe filters that you may already have. Or you can just create completely new JQL filters. What I like to do, my recommendation here is because the simple search gadget is very, very powerful, it's a good idea for you to bring in as many issues as you can. So I wouldn't limit it to searches. Traditionally, when you're adding, at least the way I do it, when I add a gadget to Jira, I'm basing it off of a filter already because I only want to see a specific subset of data. But with the, with the simple search, the, the script gets flipped upside down because now you can afford to bring all the data in and the simple search gadget is going to allow you to create like essentially ad hoc filters so that you can then find the information that you're looking for. But what's cool about it is that anybody in your team can come in and find the information that they want to see based on the sample size, which is why I recommend make the sample size as big as possible so that then you can have a lot of creative freedom to find the data that, that is relevant to you. And so coming back into Jira here, I'm going to select it in order to basically do that recommendation is 
If you have to pick between project safe filters or your advanced JQL, I just go to the projects and I actually just bring in the project. And what's neat here is I can actually bring in multiple projects so that I can have as much source data as possible. So when I hit search on this, you'll notice that I'm bringing in 133 issues over two projects. And this is going to give me a little bit more power, right? And so I can name the title of my simple search here, uh, whatever I want. I'm going to just call it all my issues. And then a couple of things that I want to highlight here. Now the tab section here, really, really cool. This tab section will allow you to essentially save pre-configured searches so that if your team is coming in and they don't want to go through the through the hassle of having to figure out what they want to look for and you have like these common like queries that are always being looked you can actually save those queries in here by creating tabs and so this is a really powerful feature so i'm going to enable that so that i can show you an example here now i'm going to create just two examples the first tab i'm just going to call it all open issues and then I'm going to do in-flight issues, which basically means um, issues that are currently in progress. Okay. And so I'm going to have those two tabs. As you can see, you get two tabs here on the bottom that correspond to the tabs above. above. And so where this simple search really starts to shine is for, and just to kind of give you an example or a description of what this gadget's all about, simple search gadget will allow you to take any field that you have in Jira, custom fields out of the box fields, bring them into this search based on the data, the pool that we brought in, right? My two projects in this example. And based on those fields, I can now make selections. I can I can select from the dropdown of that what's, what data or what options are available for that field that I brought in. And that information, and this is the cool part, will drive the rest of the gadgets that are linked to this search gadget. This will make a whole lot more sense right now when I connect everything, I'll show it to you in the, in the demo, but just trust me, this is going to change your life completely. So coming back down to their documentation, I've already kind of added a tab here. And, and so what I'm going to do is essentially do a really, really simple, just, I'm going to add another field here just to kind of show you, this can be any field you want. This can be a, actually quite a few things, right? So you can actually do custom JQLs. So if you wanted to have a very specific JQL, you can just save it as a button. And that just becomes your search thing. You can do other safe filters that you may already have. Or what I typically use it for, and I'm, I'm just still a beginner here, is I, I typically just bring in an existing field. So I'm going to bring in like due date. Due date is a very popular one. And, and I'll bring something in like, let me bring in from my fixed version. Because I use fixed versions quite a bit. So I'll bring those two in. And you can see that they're brought in. And, and that's pretty much it here. The only difference or the only new thing that I'm going to do that I want to demonstrate here is I'm going to actually save this with the configurations for the all open issues or the in flight. So for all open, I'm going to bring in status instead of all statuses, I'm going to bring in any status that isn't done. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to essentially like just select everything that isn't done. And I didn't, I didn't realize that I have so many statuses here. I will leave basically the statuses that don't look done. Although custom charts, if you're watching this video, it'd be great to know the categories of these statuses so that I know which ones are like the to do and in progress, because that would really, really help me understand which ones are or not to do done or, or in progress. So I'll leave that there. And then for my, for my in flight one, you'll see that it got actually reset. And in those statuses, I'm, I just want statuses that are essentially not to do and not done. And so I'll bring in like blocked, build broken, building, create script, edit vid, edit video, in progress, in review, insanity, in test, and I'll leave everything else out. And so those, basically both of these tabs have now been pre-configured. You don't have to do the pre-configuration. This is an optional thing. Just because I have the tabs, you can obviously just have nothing and it'll still work. And all I'm gonna do here is hit save. So once I hit save here, my simple search is basically ready to do things. And you can see that instead of 133 issues, we're already down to 37 here. And this number is actually four. And so I could in theory, leave a generic tab with everything just wide open and that'll bring in all 133 issues. 
So coming back to um, their documentation, I've essentially done some of the queries here. And so we're going to come down and talk about their, their next step, which is connecting the simple search gadget to an actual gadget. And so what that essentially means is I have a simple search gadget that I've created. I'm going to minimize this just for visibility and you'll see it here on the top left corner. These gadgets here that I made in my last video, they're, they're dynamic in the sense that they're always getting live data from Jira, but you'll notice that I have a bunch of statuses now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to configure this existing gadget. I'm going to go to come to configure and instead of just selecting projects for my source, I'm actually going to click on this and come down to simple search gadget. You're allowed to have multiple simple search gadgets on your page. And so you just want to essentially come over here to select and make sure you pick the right one. Once you pick that, those two, my custom chart simple search here and my issues by status are now connected. And this is really where the cool part starts. So let me hit save on this and let me show you why this is one of the coolest things in the world. You'll notice that my chart changed. It shows 37, which is great. But let me move it back to 133. So I can actually just clear all my selected items. And you'll notice that dynamically, this is in real time dynamically, my data got updated. So if I were to change just one status, let me just go to done for whatever reason, I wanted to just see done, I can just show done. And this chart on the right is dynamically being updated with the information on the left. So this is just a very basic usage of simple charts. Let me know if you enjoyed this. I can obviously do much, much deeper tutorials on how to do all this. But in future videos, I'm essentially always, almost always going to be connecting to a simple search. But in next week's video, I'm going to now teach you how to create or go more in depth into the very specific charts that you could do with custom charts. So drop a like if you like this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And if you have any questions about the what topics in this video, let me know in the comment section below. Are you using custom charts? Have you ever used simple search? Did you learn something? I want to know. Let's get a conversation going in the comment section below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.